Greetings and welcome to Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Trilogy. October 13th, 3.02 p.m. Rent and Cola Offices. You know, I'm glad we found the urn and all, but poor Mr. Delight got arrested again. Yep. Yeah, because uh, in the last session, we finally cleared him of stealing the urn, but then we found out that he was... Uh, I wouldn't really say implicated. He was... Uh, for some reason the word escapes me. He had basically found out being in an area where someone had died, apparently. Because of course we can't play, you know, an Ace Attorney game with investigating, and figuring out who did it, and shouting objection without murder. Because, you know, that makes total sense. Anyways. So, basically, he went from being a thief to being a murderer, and I guess that's the reason why he's been trying so hard to be called a thief, because he knows that people are going to consider him a murderer even though he's not a murderer. But, you know, that's kind of the whole point of the series, is that just because you're implicated as the murderer doesn't mean that you are, and therefore, you're going to need me as the ace attorney to defend you against that. But now that we've basically proven that he was at the scene of the crime, it's going to be very difficult to, uh, to prove that he is not the killer without finding out that there was somebody else or that he showed up maybe an hour after the murder happened. We're going to have to find out what the autopsy says. But yeah, anyways. Well... Supposedly, Mr. Delight was in the CEO's office when the murder occurred. No way, Jose. Ah. Why are you talking about Josie there, Maya? Shut up. I don't buy it. Also, what? The one who proved that Mr. Delight was there was he himself. At least from what I can understand. Carl, shut up. No one cares. Looks like you did it good, too good of a job this time, Z. Um, uh, well... How about we just get started looking into the KB security murder? I think I'm gonna head back to Kieran Village for a little while, if that's alright. Good! I don't want children here. Sure, but why? Because I don't want children here, Maya. Shut up! Don't ask why. I'm gonna bring the sacred room back and have some people take a look at it. Oh, that's a good idea. I think I'll go with- No! Mr. Maya! You shouldn't stay here! I want you two to spend some quality time together. Wow. Uh, why does... Why is it the five-year-old is thinking of romance? That's disgusting. I really want to slap her. Like, maybe with a billiard bat. You know, whatever. Billiard stick. Ugh. Freaking children. Full of love and happiness. Pearl is so caught up in her fantasy, she forgot there's a murder to solve. Take her and give him to Pearl. Now remember, no fighting, okay? Hmm. I can't make any promises. Maya's an idiot. She's gone. Okay, Z. Wait, what was that about me? No, nah, never mind. Okay, time to get going on this murder investigation. Yeah, you do that. Um. Really? Don't. Why? Well, I need to get to the CEO's office, but I don't know where to go. Um, maybe we can talk to Mr. Delight himself. October 13th, Sanitation Center Visitors Room. I already told you, it's not me. A sad, pitiful whine that tapers into silence? Sounds like they're interrogating Mr. Delight right now. And we don't have enough time as it is. Yeah, well, I guess the police are going crazy, just like we are. Yes, so they thought he was just a thief, but now they got a murder case on their paws. Oh, excuse me. I guess you're right. <clears throat> that guard over there looks a bit on edge, too. Yeah, I'm sure he is. All things considered that they never changed the background. Maya. Stupid. Come on, we'll just have to come back later. Okay, we don't have to be rude about it. Let's go check out some other place. 
Let's do that. October 13th, Masky Masquez's hideout. Oh, Zacky boy. Maya. Mrs. Delight? All I wanted to do was help my dear Ronnie. Yeah, but I guess it ended up hurting his case. Don't say that, Z. Shut up, Maya. It ended up hurting his case. Well, I, I didn't mean for you to repeat it. That, why not you just pouring salt in the wound? She doesn't need your help beating herself up. Hey, Zacky boy. Please. Please help Ronnie. He's not a killer, I swear. My Ronnie wouldn't hurt a fly. Alright. I'll poke around and see what I can find out. Really? Are you serious? Oh, I'm so happy. I knew asking for your help was the right thing to do. I don't know what I can do to help anymore. I know I damn Mrs. Delight has such a vulnerable side. I mean... If her husband goes to jail, she loses the money. Because she's a gold digger. Phoenix! Put two and two together! It makes eight. What? What? Alright, well... Listen not care for Saki boy. My Ronnie would never ke ever kill anyone. It's just not in him. I don't think he would either, Z. I mean, he probably could. You never know. Maybe he could do it on accident and then just walk away and say, Well, I can't, you know, call the police because I'm, you know, supposedly... Masky Masquez, therefore, if I call the police about a murder or about someone being dead, you know, they're just gonna label me the murderer because I'm gonna try and run away having stolen an artifact. Hmm. Mm hmm. Maya, shut up. Yeah, but you have to admit, he's got a bit of a temper to him. It's not that hard to imagine him just snapping and screaming, Please die. <laughs> Please die! He would never say that. Anyway, Mrs. Delight, he might not be a killer. But he's still going around saying that he's a thief. I would told you, that's just a fantasy for him. Well, that's still a problem. He needs to stop doing that. Okay? One way or another, the police are going to get pissed off enough to where they're actually going to detain him for probably, you know, three to four days. And they're going to continuously do that every week until he just knocks it off. And then at some point, he's going to be arrested for, or, uh, fined for, uh, interfering with police investigation. And if you get multiple charges, that ends up being a felony. So he's an idiot and needs to stop it. Man. Anime is really dumb. Mrs. Delight, I hate to say it, but you're the only living, only one living in a fantasy world. Wait, she is? Really? Well, I guess that's true because, you know, she's a gold digger. What? Uh, what? How dare you say that to me, Zacky boy? Well, I mean, you are. I know everything about Ronnie. We don't have any secrets between us. I don't know about that. Ronnie isn't the thieving type. He's so honest that he wouldn't even sneak a snap. Mm, you sure about that? He's so honest that he wouldn't even steal a glance. Thief? Ha! The very idea. Hmm. I guess I just don't get it. Huh? Get what? I don't get why people who are gold diggers are trying to pretend like they're not. Seems kind of stupid. It's very obvious. She's only trying to help him for the money. She doesn't really have a job of her own, and the only thing that she really cares about is the bike. Hmm. And speeding on it, at that. She's not a very good wife let alone a very good girlfriend. She's not a good person in general. She can't understand how they can be so different and yet be such a happy couple. That's because Ronnie's delusional and an idiot. You know, he's gonna pretend that she's not wasting his money, even though he knows she's wasting his money. And then he's gonna just be like, well, as long as she's happy, I I'm happy. <laughs> That's a terrible relationship. That is very unhealthy. He absolutely needs to be slapped. Yeah, they sure are different. Come on now, Zack boy. It's not that mysterious, is it? It was love at first sight. For me, anyway. Hmm. Yeah, sure it was. That only solidifies, you know, my proof that she's a gold digger. Come on. What? For you? Yeah. 
so. I hate these kinds of people more than anything. Mm, you sure about that? Uh, you mean Ace Detectives? No, oh, I'm fine with Ace Detectives. Oh, so then you must mean the thieves. No, they're alright too. I just hate thieves that pretend to be Ace Detectives. That's very specific. Okay. There's nothing I hate more than cowardly men. That... But... He was brave and smart enough to outwit the police by pretending to not only be the ace detective, but to be able to be the ace detective going after himself, who is stealing artifacts and getting away with it. I, I don't understand what you mean by cowardly. Like... What, you thought he would fight the police? That would be a stupid thing to do. He would end up going down for murder at that point. Whether or not he actually killed an officer. Because, you know, they don't take that lightly. You're an absolute dumb. My gosh, this woman pisses me off. By the way, why did you go to Detective Atme's office anyway? Well, as the trial went on, I started to get more and more anxious. I went there to try and find out more about the real criminal. The real criminal? The real criminal. The real criminal? Yes, obviously the real Massey Masquez is not my Ronnie, right? Yeah. And the tech that may knew more about Massey Masquez than anyone else. They mentioned him on the Great People Around Town segment on TV. So then you went there to ask him some questions. But we're at the trial questioning Detective Atme. Why would you go ask the detective, knowing that he's not there? Oh my gosh, these people are absolute morons. That's not how this works. That's right, I'll do whatever it takes to save my man. His, se uh, his secretary said the ace detective isn't in right now. Yeah, because he was at court, stupid. But I forced my way past her and into his hideout. I wouldn't exactly call that office of his a hideout. That bag was sitting right there on top of the table. Now that I think about it, actually, it's kind of funny that Ronnie, who is delusional and thinking that he's Mastie Masquez, has all the memorabilia of Mastie Masquez. So, you know, him saying that he is Mastie Masquez is kind of stupid. But then we look over at Luke Atme, if we remember his office, his office had a giant painted portrait of him hanging over a fireplace. That's almost no different than what Ronnie's doing. So, they're both insane. Now, oh, whatever. That bag was sitting right there on top of the table. Yeah? Oh yeah, we saw that bag there yesterday too. There's nothing lower than someone who would try to pin a crime on someone else. Mm, but then you just talked about a thief pretending to be an ace detective. I mean, I guess he could technically still pin it on somebody else, but he doesn't. He specifically goes after crimes that Masti Masquez commits. Which is himself. He won't let anyone else take the credit for it. So, mm, you're dumb? Man, this, this lady is just proving more and more that she's an idiot and has, like, negative 5 IQ and probably, you know, she probably ended up uh, skipping school and just dropping out in general. I don't even know how she has a license to drive a bike at that point. Heck, they probably didn't even give her one. Knowing her gold digger status, she probably ended up paying someone. Anyways... And not in, you know, dollar bills kind of paying. Anyways. Uh, Mrs. Delight, do you know about KB Security? Don't be silly. Of course I do. That's where my Ronnie works. So she thinks he still works there, huh? Well, there's no proof to say that he doesn't. I don't think anyone has... Well, we've not actually proven that he works there, which is the weird part. But at the same time, we've not also been given evidence that he's been fired in any capacity. So, yeah. He works there, 
as of right now, under suspicion that people say that he works there. With the fact that he also had a key card to the, you know, the CEO's office. Which, I'm still going to question as to why he has it. Other than for the, you know, the green mail issue. Ah, whatever. And yeah, according to what we heard today... Or technically a couple days ago, since that was the last session... Come on, don't tell me you don't know. Ron Delight was once an employee of KB Security. He was a professional security guard. Ron quit. He didn't work there anymore. I mean... Who's to say, Phoenix? Like, that's not 100% solidified in stone. But whatever. You do you, I guess. It looks like Mrs. Delight doesn't know. KB Security is only about 20 minutes away. By motorcycle, that is. Yeah, with you flying at 100 plus miles an hour, I'm sure. Woman, you're stupid. Oh my gosh. Can't stand her. I don't even want to talk to her anymore. I just want to get this over with. I've been screaming at her for, you know, 20 minutes, basically. And got nowhere. Larry told me it takes 30 minutes by car. Yeah, Phoenix. Remember, she's a speeder. She's a racer. Well, not really a racer. You know, she does the illegal acts. She goes over the limit. So, of course, it's going to take her a short amount, you know, a shorter amount of time to get somewhere. Because she doesn't obey the laws of the road. Well, I have to admit, I tend to fly pretty fast on my back. Make it save security that fast? Are you sure you aren't literally flying? Yeah, seriously. She's doing triple digits. Why don't you give... Huh, why don't I give you a ride sometime? Well, better yet, how about now? Uh, 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 no. I'll pass, thanks. Coward. Come on. Yeah, she is doing an illegal act, but come on. She offered you a ride. Mm. You can take that any way you want. But really shouldn't be uh, turning it down regardless. Whatever. Why don't you just tell us where it is and we'll go ourselves. Haha, <laughs> what a scaredy cat you are, Z. Shut up, Maya. I'm a wolf. But I thought you were a phoenix. Isn't that what we figured out a couple sessions ago? Shut up, Maya. Has Delight told us the location of KB Security? Okay, let's head over there right away, Z. Uh, well, we gotta at least ask one last question. So, what is it really love at first sight when you first meet Mr. Light? Well, maybe not at first sight, but Ronna saved my life. I was in debt, and he paid off the debt. Mm hmm Saved your life? I was at work one day when two robbers suddenly rushed in. Well, I'm not the kind to just curl in a little ball in a corner, so I fought back. Robbers? Yeah, they took me hostage. I was so frightened. They were both carrying these huge knives, and I broke down in tears. Yeah, I would too if I were in that situation. Mm, but they're knives. If you're smart enough, you'll know how to overpower a dude with a knife. And I mean that by smart, you have to actually know what you're doing, so don't just try to do that to any random dude with a knife. It's very, not good. It's very dangerous. Oh, I think I get it. Did Mr. Delight come running in to save you? Yes, exactly. I remember he looked so handsome in that god uniform of his. What? Uh... He went right up to those two knife-wielding robbers and screamed in their faces. Hmm... Methinks that this is a setup. Please, stop it! He screamed. I could see the robber's faces turn pale. <laughs> yeah, his scream probably blew out their eardrums. That high-pitched shriek of his does have a surprisingly strong effect on people. Then, crying and swinging his arms like crazy, he attacked the two robbers. Well, that's even dumber. That just makes the robbers pathetic at that point. So they're not gonna you know, know how to take on a dude that's just flailing his arms about wildly. That's a good way to get yourself hurt. 
All by himself. He came to save me. A total stranger. All by himself. Hmm. Yeah, uh... I'm gonna have to say that you are delusional on both those accounts. Or whatever. He was so scared that he was crying and shaking, but he still risked his life for me. Well, that's a great story. No, it's a dumb story, Maya. Anybody could have done that. Come on. Ugh. People are stupid. Yes, he may not look it, but in a tough situation, there's no one better. That's why I fell in love with him like I did. Hmm, sure you did. I'm sure it was... Well, I mean, you said that it was kind of love at first sight. Which means that him saving you is not what made you fall in love. It was clearly his money. But then you, you know, bounced back and realized, Oh yeah, he's the dude that saved me. And he's rich. Okay, now I love him at first sight. That's not how that works. Woman, you are garbage. That's so romantic. Phoenix, shut up before I slap you. I'd fall in love too, I guess. No, you wouldn't. Gee, I hope you do the same for me if I ever get taken hostage. Well, I mean, we kind of did. That was what happened in the last game. That was literally the end of the last game, was me, you know, saving you from a hostage situation. But you know what? I'm just going to let you forget that simply because you're a teenager and I don't want you to, you know, to go that far. As to what our friendship means to you, so, uh, get the frick out of here. With Maya, that possibly always seems to loom in the not-so-distant future. Well, Phoenix, it happened literally the last game. Man. Everyone is just stupid in this anime, it seems. Absolutely ridiculous. That is a bright yellow vault. Why does this place look so techno? That doesn't make any sense. Giant emergency button in the back. Hmm. This does not look like an office for a security team. But, okay. October 13th, KB Security CEO's office. So, I guess this is where it all went down, huh? The wasn't here looks sick. Like, uh, just like you'd expect in a CEO's office. No, no, no. You're thinking of a bank fault, Maya. And also, no. Just shut up. What has that got to do with anything? Hey, it's you guys, see? No, it's a come to you. Oh, you're not surprised, huh? Nah, not really. Today was a real train wreck for you guys, huh? Sure was, pal. That rescue made real fools of us, see? Oh, you're gonna mock me, eh? Yeah. Yeah, I feel for you, pal. Wow, that's not like you at all. I thought you'd be more like... Ah, Bravos are really great. Yeah, you guys... Uh, that was really great. You guys what? got what you deserved, pal. Ho 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 ho. Or something like that effect. Ah, do I really sound like that to you, pal? I mean, kinda. If the gumshoe fits. Ah, uh, that's disgusting, see? Yeah, uh, well, anyway. The point is I can tell when someone puts their heart into their job, see? And I can sympathize when things don't go your way, pal. Sometimes, I feel like wrong is the only way things go for us detectives, see? Yeah. Wow. Say a lot of weird extra words there. I had no idea. I wouldn't really call them words, they just sound like sounds. It's just... Random screeches coming from his vocal cords. What? Never mind. Ted Gumpty was such a nice guy. Now if this little love fest is over, maybe we can start investigating. Ted Gumpty, tell us what you know about the murder. Um, okay. But the thing is, I'm really not supposed to. Yeah. But you do anyways, you've done it in, th you know, two other separate games. You might as well do it here. Hey, come on. What about how we put our hearts to our work? Things are really working against us right now, and we need help. 
Okay, okay, I'll tell you. Just don't start crying on me, okay, pal? Okay, I won't cry on you, pal. Yeah, you're mocking me, say. That doesn't make me want to tell you one answer. Yeah. The victim's name is Kane Bullock. He was the CEO of KB Security and a pretty big fella in his own right. His corpse was discovered at night this morning. His estimated time of death was 1 in the morning on October 12th. Hmm. Okay. Estimated. I mean, that doesn't mean it's 100% accurate. But okay. Cut a death with blunt force trauma to the head. Probably an object in this room. Well, you have him outlined near a vault. Which makes me think someone swung the door on him. Which can easily have been the, uh, the heavy object that caused the blunt force trauma. It's a vault door. You know, it's a safe. Those things are usually super thick and thus super heavy because they're entirely made out of metal. Quit being stupid, Gumshoe. Ugh, man, everyone is just dumb. I feel like everyone got dumber between the first two games and this game. It doesn't make much sense. Like, they haven't learned their lessons. Bunch of idiots. It happened at exactly the same time that Master Demas was stealing the urn, huh? Kane's autopsy report. Time of death, 10-12 at 1am. Cause, uh, cerebral hemorrhage from blunt trauma to the head. Yeah. So why did it take almost an entire day to discover the body? There's a good explanation for that one. Fuller's body was stashed away inside that safe. Oh. So maybe it wasn't the safe door. My bad. Although it still could be. And then they just picked up the body, threw it in the door, and then slammed it shut. But whatever. Safe. Well, it is pretty big. Nobody had heard from him, and when they opened the safe this morning, out he came. Wait. How do they know the combination of the safe? It's his office. It's technically his safe. He's the only one who should know the code to unlock it. So how did they manage to unlock it unless they got, you know, some kind of super tech geeks, you know, geek squad going on here that allowed him to basically bypass all of the security that that safe has and then somehow pry open the door, which I'm sure they wouldn't be able to do very easily. They would need the Jaws of Life to do that. Eh, something's not right. Oh, so the body fell out. It's, uh, that white string must be the shape from when he fell out. Good deduction there, Phoenix. Ugh, oh, getting a headache from all the idiocy in this room. I think we still need some more information about Mr. Billard. Maybe you could start by getting the man's name right. So, um... What happened to Masky Mesquez? He's at the detention center screaming like a madman, say. Investigate me again! He keeps yelling. Ah, no, no. I didn't mean him. He's not the real thief anyway, right? Bro, oh, you mean Detective Atman? Ho, 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 ho. Better watch yourself, Gumshoe. Santa could be around. Oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. I keep forgetting about it in every single game, say. Well, at least you know where your place is. Oh, that was great. I got got what he deserved. Ho 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 ho. Can you stop ho hoing in this? Now that's the detective I know and love. Ah, oh, she loves me. Uh, not that way. You might want to take a step back on that. Uh, it's a platonic love, not... Whatever. Think about it. Batman was always around when a calling card showed up, see? But he always mysteriously disappeared when this heist took place. Yeah. But I was hiding at the crime scene. Heh. <laughs> yeah, right. That's the lamest thing I've ever heard. That's how you just know he was the thief, see? That would explain how he was able to retrieve the stolen item he keeps bragging about. Yeah. He just did that to make himself look like a great detective. That's all. 
But there's this one thing I can't figure out about his first heist. His first heist? His first heist, yeah. Yeah, the Tear of Emanon case. There was a witness on that one. A witness? Here, I saved the newspaper clipping. Since a thief is already under arrest, you guys can keep it, see? Hmm. Oh. Hey, this guard here. Haven't I seen him before? It's pretty small, so it's kind of hard to see, but now that she mentions it. Newspaper clipping, an article on Mas D. Masquez's first heist. Hang on. Oh, you know what? I'm betting that, uh, that security guard in the background is Ronnie. Which means that's how he figured out... Well, not really figured out, but that's how he, uh, came to like Master D. Masquez, because he started at KB Security, learned of this, and was like, Oh yeah, I really want to become this guy. Which is weird, because he's literally working with the guy right there, who's in the foreground. I mean, obviously he wouldn't know that. Still, it's weird. Alright. Oh, that prosecutor. I really don't like that guy. The way he used our own evidence to do that to Mr. Delight. Throwing coffee, spitting in Santa's face about not wanting to drink soda. Uh, what is this about soda, say? Uh, never mind. Yeah, I think he did that way. You know, did it that way just because he knew he'd hurt more. That's what my gut tells me anyway. See. So who's that Java addicted mask maniac anyway? Prosecutor got it. He's quite the enigma, huh? Enigma? Enigma? You mean Gumshoe? Shut up. It's hard to say words when I'm using this voice. See. Oh, okay. The thing is, pal. I never even heard of that guy before. He just showed up one day at the prosecutor's office. Came out of nowhere. Yeah. That's right. He said this was his first case as a prosecutor. Which... <coughs> excuse me. Which means, uh... He could have actually been a defense attorney. And then just kind of, you know... Decided not to be a defense attorney. Which is weird. Maybe he had a bad run-in with a client that was actually guilty and he made them innocent. And that caused him to you know, have a panic attack, and you know, he got traumatized by it in some capacity, and then swore off being a defensive attorney. I don't know. And it's true, according to the records anyway. But, 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 no way he's an amateur. He's an Iceman in court, a maverick that gives me goosebumps. Goosebumps? You? Yeah, yeah. Which is weird, because I'm a weasel. What? I knew something was off about him, so I asked around. Nobody would talk to me. They all just turned the other way, see? Poor Detective Gumshoe. I have no idea why you're so unpopular. Ah, no. That's not what I meant, see? That got a guy acts like he knows me and has a grudge against me. I get the feeling he's hiding some kind of dark secret. Which is funny, because, you know... He's, uh, hiding evidence in his pocket. So maybe he is hiding that dark secret in his pocket. And we don't know about it because, you know... Just like with us in finding evidence, he's just like, Yeah, I'm gonna put it in my pocket and then bring it up in court later because... <laughs> who needs the police to actually, you know, scan this evidence? This guy's crazy. Alright. Ew. Think about it. A dead guy was laying in here all night. Yeah. Oh, by the way, don't bother asking about fingerprints. There were none. Well, somebody opened the safe on the night of the crime, right? Yeah, and so? Well, if Mr. Bullard's body was hidden in there, it must mean that it was opened by either the killer or the victim, right? Uh, yeah, I guess so. Oh, ho, 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 ho. I got some bad news for you, pal. Are you ready? Uh, okay. Shoot. Open his baby is no piece of cake. There are only a few people who know how to open the safe, pal. Yeah, and? Everyone that knows how to open the safe has airtight alibis. 
my check. Everyone except one. That is. I'm almost afraid to ask. Former security chief, Ron Delight. What? Ron Delight? He was a security chief? Ron? So he knew how to open the safe, huh? Okay, well that causes problems. Why would the chiefs know? Why would he give, you know, administrative a uh, permission? I was gonna say access. Well, I guess it's the same thing. Why would he give administrative permission to uh, someone that low of ranking? You'd think he'd want to give it to maybe somebody else, maybe his secretary, maybe, you know, his right-hand man. I wouldn't think a chief would be his right-hand man, but whatever. Someone that's, you know, working directly under him. Not someone who's going to be assigned to multiple different places in multiple different areas. Eh, whatever. Yeah, sorry for running on your parade there, pal. Okay. Um... This must be the CEO's desk. It's a lot simpler than I would have thought. Hey, that looks like a super soft chair. Let me try it out just for a second. Oh, nice. I feel just like a CEO. Hi you, whip me up a cup of coffee. Something really expensive, important. Tea and some scones. Move it. Tea coffee? Ah, this is a life. Uh, the fact I'm sat in that chair just before he was brutally killed, you know. Eek! Okay. Oh, there's a button here. Let's see. Ooh. Well, I didn't mean to do that. Perry! Cut it out! Don't press that! I mean, she already pressed it, Gumshoot! Oh my gosh, it's so loud! <laughs> that was pretty funny! I never knew Tekken could jump like that! Ah. What is that button, anyway? Ah, it's an emergency buzzer. It says it right there on the panel. Oops, you're right. It's written right there. Good job, Maya. Oh my gosh, I really wish you had gone with Pearl. So stupid. See, how many times have I told you to read the instructions first? This alarm's connected to the basement guard room. It's used to summon security up here. Really? Then it's possible on the night of the crime. Oh, so when the CEO was attacked, do you think that maybe he pressed the buzzer? Yeah, I thought about that, so I asked around down there. But they said that the buzzer never went off that night. Also, we couldn't find any fingerprints on the buzzer. But Bullard, the victim, wasn't wearing any gloves, by the way. So, just so you know. Hmm. I think we'd better go and talk to that guard about this emergency buzzer. Uh, connect to the basement security guard office. Okay. There are no fingerprints. Right. Okay. Must be some kind of bookshelf. Rolling cabinet hybrid. I can't get in between these two shelves. Don't strain yourself trying. It looks like the shelves are controlled by a special panel. So I guess it's one shelf at a time, huh? Looks like they're f uh, filled with a bunch of files. Yeah, files filled with data about security jobs they were hired to handle. Which means you shouldn't be looking at them. It's confidential. Maybe a good night's read. Uh, if you got it down yet. I was hoping for something a little bit more exciting, like UFOs or something. Whatever. I got this big, thick binder here. Need the heavy lifting to me, Z. No. Reading a file isn't exactly back-breaking work. Just a little hard on the eyes. Ah! Ah! Calm down, Z. Shut up, Maya. Where'd you find out, Z? This file. It's not about any sort of security operation or anything. This huge file is all about Masky Masquez. It's filled with info on him. What? What kind of info? Uh, it could be date of birth, his uh, legal name, his mother's maiden name, his credit card information, his bank account number, you know, his place of residence, where he's worked in the past six years. It could be a lot of things. Could be boyfriend girlfriend status, marital status, you know, blood type. O negative. It's filled with incredibly detailed information about his methods and the crime scenes. Huh? Three dots? Question mark? 
Fizzy, look at the last page. It's a list. Let's see. Tier of a man. 100,000. This looks like a list of all the treasures that Masky Mask has stolen. So then $100,000 is the value of the stolen item? I don't know. That number sounds kind of low to me. I think I'd better secretly make a copy of this list. Mm, 100,000, huh? Kane's list found on a table at the crime scene. Kane's list added to court record. Something about that's a little suspicious. 100,000 for... A giant, uh, ruby? of Amanon, Crown of Bungora, Left Hand of Hades, Portrait of Ehenna, Mahina. I think those are buyouts. I think when he stole those, he gave them to KB Security, and that was their cut for stealing the for letting him steal the item, basically. Hmm. I don't know. That's my theory. It's kind of a messed up theory, but, you know. We'll see where it goes. Probably won't go anywhere. But I don't think there's really anything else to check out. So, let's go talk to the security room. Hmm. Wow, oh, chocolate milk with a straw in it? Ah, oh, this guy's got class. This is a gentleman we're dealing with here. October 13th, KB Security, Security Guard Room. Wow, this place is super high-tech. Kinda looks like the inside of a spaceship from a sci-fi movie. Wow, this is really something else. For a security guard office, it sure doesn't feel very secure. Really, Maya? KB Security Guard. Uh oh just remembered. Larry might be here. Hey, Z, what's up? Great. Uh, so he is here. Yo, how's it hanging, dude? And you got my sweet little Maya with you, too. Uh, I'm not your Maya, so don't ever say that again. That's disgusting. Hi, Larry. Hey, <laughs> yeah, I was working my fingers to the bone. And it walks my angel. I got no problems with a date time date. It's all good. No, that's not what we're here for. Also, she's, you know, a child. That's disgusting. You're like, what, 25? You need to get the frick out of here. We're investigating the Bullard murder. Huh? Oh, yeah. That's right. <laughs> You're a liar, aren't you? Lawyer. Prick. So hopelessly clueless. That sounded redundant. What? Yeah, well, it's about the murder case. Boy, have I got some good info for you. Really? What is it? <laughs> uh, I was eating a donut when it happened. Mm. <laughs> I don't mind sharing my sweet little, you know, sharing with my sweet little Maya. But see, here is a different story. But Larry, I thought you two were old school buddies. <laughs> That's, <laughs> that was then, and this is now. Yeah, he's a douchebag. That's kind of the point. It's like written on this poster in fine print. A God's Five Commandments. Wow, this sounds serious. Let's see what it says. Number one, obey thy superior. I mean, that's kind of a commandment for all employees when it comes to their bosses. But whatever. Two, respect thy superior. I mean... That one you, uh, can be omitted. That one's kind of got a little bit of a leeway. You don't really have to respect them because they don't really deserve it. You have to earn respect. You can't just be a boss and then expect people to respect you. You have to earn it, even as a boss. Deal with it. Smile at that superior. No, you're supposed to smile at the customer, which is a Walmart thing. And uh, even that's kind of not happening because, you know, for whatever reason, they're not really enforcing that. 
so many frowners when I go to Walmart. Anyways. Salute thy superior. Wow, really? Okay, I see where this is going. Buy donuts for thy superior upon command? It's signed Wendy Oldback, head supervisor. Wow. I guess that makes sense. She's one tough old bird, let me tell you. Cross her and you come face to face with her real genuine ray gun. Yeah, sounds scary, alright. Well, fortunately, she's on vacation. That's why I'm so relaxed right now. Oh, I'm so glad too, because I don't want to have to deal with her either. Uh, what's with this? Hey, Larry, that's your jacket, isn't it? That's right. Um, did you know you hung it right on top of some kind of lever? Yeah, sure. I was told it never, ever touched that lever. She scowled and huffed at me. Something terrible will happen if you do. Got it, Greenhorn? So why hang your jacket on such an important lever? Because it got me curious. The jacket's weight pulls the lever down. That's what they call an accident. Wow. How does this dude manage to even obtain a job, let alone hold one? That is... Mm. I would have fired him for insubordination on the spot at that point. Doesn't the suspense just kill you? <laughs> Don't you want to know what'll happen, huh? Uh, not really. I mean, it's a giant lever with a lot of glowing red lights on it. Yeah, it's probably, you know, the circuit breaker. It probably kills the power to the entire building. Which is, you know, not something that you want to ha have happen. You know, that... It's probably an absolute desperate emergency system where once you cut the power, all the doors open. So that way everyone can exit the building safely. But that also kills the cameras, which means you won't be able to catch any criminals that are inside the building. Friggin' Larry's an idiot. It's true. It's killing me too. What about you, Z? No. Yeah, but for a different reason. Um... Okay. The screens there show what's going on all over the building. Everywhere. And it's my job to keep a steady eye on them. All of them. Yeah, but you're not doing that right now, which is pissing me off. Wouldn't sound so smug if I were you. Can you watch regular TV on these two? Anyone would sit here and watch TV instead of working? It's slurry. Hey, Matt, I'm a pro, okay? Besides, you can't get regular TV on it. You could have just said no. You didn't have to sit there and try and make yourself look professional when clearly you're not. You don't even have your tie up to your neck like you're supposed to. Your shirt's open. You're not supposed to be exposing your chest to people. You're on the job. You're on the clock. You're at your workstation. At least look professional if you're not going to act it. How do you know that, Larry? Because that's what my first bit of investigation, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Three deaths. I know what you're thinking. It was a professional investigation, all right? Mm, no, it wasn't. Uh, there's nothing here. Chair. Stuff. More stuff. What's this? That's my partner's seat. Your partner? Well, uh, that's what I call her. <laughs> She's my superior, actually. Kind of a weird old lady. Uh, there's a tea spill all over the machine. You know? Oh, don't worry about it. Just the other day, I spilled some chocolate milk on mine. What? Are these things, like, waterproof? Well, I mean, even if it's waterproof, it wouldn't necessarily be stained slash sugar proof, because the buttons can still stick, and what is white is now brown. That's disgusting. So, yeah. Probably shouldn't be eating at your workstation. Headache. Still works fine, more or less. They really know how to build these, I guess. Uh, great. Well, we've looked at everything, so I guess we'll just talk to him. So, what's this good info you were talking about, Larry? Hey, here we go. Pro. You can't just give away information for free. Actually, technically, you do have to give it away for free. Especially when the police get involved. Granted, I'm not 
an officer. You know, I'm just a liar, lawyer, freck. But, uh, yeah. You still have to give out that info when asked. It's kind of part of the job. You gain the info by being the security guard, and then in turn give that info to the police when necessary. Stop being stupid. I said that, like, 20 times in this one session. These people are actual dumb. He wants a bribe? Not professional, but more, I don't know, honest. I mean, I wouldn't really say that. Can you talk to him? No. No, I can't. Can you talk to him, Maya? And not steal my lines? Perry, tell us already. What's the good info? Hey, I like that. This kitten has some good claws. Okay, you really want to know? Well, as long as you don't call me a kitten, that's kind of disturbing. I'm a vixen. I hate everyone. Yes, yes. So tell me. Okay, so the thing is, Ron Delight was an employee here. And naturally, since I'm a pro, I looked into his background. Follow me. Wait, what? You... You just straight up looked into his background? That... First off, I don't think that's in your job description. Second, I'm pretty sure that's illegal. Like, that should not be something that you have access to. That should only be accessible to the CEO and or... Uh, your superior, i.e. your boss, who hired Ron Delight. And since Ron is a chief, apparently, that means that the only boss that he has is the CEO. That file should not be accessible to you. I feel like you deserve to go to jail now. Yes, you're a pro. I follow you. Go on. Well, one year ago, Ron Delight was fired. And there was no warning at all. It just happened all of a sudden. I know this is a small company, but I think that was pretty awful. Wow, what great info you have. I guess he must have done something bad to have gotten fired like that. Like, maybe skipping out of work to go pick up hot chicks or something. Hmm. Something like what you would do? I bet anything he would. But, yeah. Uh, being a chief of a security company that he is, I wouldn't think it would be that easy to fire him unless they found out he was actually the thief. Like, maybe he might have some truth to stealing stuff, but... Mm, I don't think they would have just fired him knowing that he was Masky Masquez. They definitely would have, uh... They would have confiscated everything that he has, including everything that he owns in his apartment. They would have detained him, called the real police, and they would have arrested him on the spot. So, yeah. Something's still not right. No, that's just you. So what's it like to be a part-time security guard? Let me tell you, it's tough. Whew. I have to push buttons, look at monitors, and tell my boss, yes sir, or yes ma'am, and I have to wear a suit. That's pretty much it. Yeah. I mean, if they hired you, that pretty much would be the definition of being a security guard. You walk in, wearing a suit, sit down, wait six hours, stand up, leave, go take the suit off at home. Pretty much don't get to do anything. Don't get any action. They probably didn't even give him a taser. Ugh. What a terrible security. Anyways. Let me tell you, it's tough. But, you know me, I get by a red, I guess. First, I have to keep my eye on those monitors all the time. Yeah. We just learned that. Monitors? There are security cameras set in each room around the building. It's really hard. Sometimes I feel like my eyes are gonna fall out. Uh, that's a weird thing to say. I would think that you'd be more afraid of them burning. But okay. Because that screen is super bright from what I can tell. And the room is dark, which doesn't make it any better for your eyesight. Oh. Yeah, you need natural lighting for that setting. You need to dim down the screen, put natural lighting around the screen, and maybe even behind you maybe like dim that down a little bit as well so that way it's just not overwhelmingly bright yeah 
And if I see something suspicious, I have to contact one of the teams. What teams? Yeah, Team Alpha, Team Bravo, Team Charlie, Team Delta, all the way to Team Zeta. What? The security team for this company. They're supposedly the best in the business. That's kind of weird that they have a security team overlaying a security team. Well, I guess you do need one dude to watch everything while everyone else does the actual hunting and apprehending. But I'm no amateur either. So, if it's something small, I don't bother calling it. In other words, you basically watch TV screens all day long. Yeah, I guess. Um, not of the crime. You were in this office when the murder took place, weren't you? Uh, why do you say that? This is just a part-time job for me. I can't operate the equipment, and I'm dumb. <laughs> well, you know what? I will give him credit where credit's due, he at least admits it. Even if it's a part-time and you are dumb, you're still in charge of security here. Hey, give me a break! Don't try to pin the whole thing on me! That's not fair, Z! Huh? I don't think you can expect someone like him to take any responsibility. Anyway, the point is, you were here that night, right? Uh, three deaths? Oh no, you gotta be kidding me. I knew something smelled bad, and it was the butts after all. Gross. Well, <laughs> it's like I always say, that was then, this is now, okay? Looks like I'm going to have to break his Cyclops after all. Okay. Well, um, I think we're just gonna have to go ahead and end the session here. Simply because that's uh, a whole lot of nothing that basically just happened for practically an hour, which is a bit sad. We'll investigate other things before coming back to Larry. So with that being said, uh, like I said, that'll be the end of today's session. Thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Stay safe. Take care. We'll see you in the next session.